Welcome back to the Tapes Archive podcast, where we release rare interviews that need to be heard. In this episode, we have Eddie Van Halen and Michael Anthony. At the time of this interview in 1989, Van Halen was in Japan promoting their OU812 album. In the interview, Van Halen talks about how Eddie wants to be remembered when he dies, David Lee Roth and Ted Templeman, their album OU812, why Eddie is still not 100% sober, and so much more. We have also added a bonus interview with Eddie alone from 1985. The interview is conducted by Steve Harris. To learn more about Steve, please check out our podcast only interview with him, which is out now. Thanks for tuning in. And now it's time to open the vault. The last couple albums have both hit number one. I guess the, that's, you know, stimulates the band. It keeps you guys going. Mm-hmm. So actually, Sammy joining the band was pretty stimulating right there. Uh, as far as uh, its number one albums, it's not like we hit on any kind of a formula or anything like that. It's just that's just the way it happens. We don't write for a number one album or to have a hit song or anything like that. We just write what we feel, and uh, luckily everybody likes it. Everybody says that thing. Everybody says, "Ah, no, we never think about it." You know, we just write the songs. We're doing the kind of music. Well, it just so happens that it gets in the charts. Well, see, if, you know, if you want to really get down to it, you know. None of us really have to even be doing this. We don't want it anymore. I mean, we're all pretty secure and everything. So, in, in a way, that's kind of the beauty of it because it, it makes it fun now. Yo! Hi. Hi, Steve Harris. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. What's that, man? Coffee or uh, something? Cold? Uh, yeah, Coke will do it. Coke. We were asking Michael, uh, how come you guys keep going on? I mean, you're financially secure, according to Michael. Uh, what, what, what keeps you guys going? Well, so, I mean, for one, the, the reason we started this was not just to make money. I mean, obviously, you need money to survive, but that's not the. The main thing, you know. Other guys say they just did it for stardom. Oh man, that's the last thing. I well, did. you know, hey, hey, I mean, I did it for money before being a star. Mm-hmm. You know, you need money to survive. I mean, honestly, that's the one thing I can't stand about this whole thing is being recognized and stuff like that. You know, especially when I, when I got married. You know, mm-hmm. my wife's an actress, man. It was even worse. Things have gotten better though, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I just learned how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. You know how to hide a little better now. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Since Sammy's joining the group, when he sees you guys in pictures, it seems more like a you know, family type thing now. Really. I mean, S- Sammy lives like two doors away from me out, uh-huh. out in Malibu, you know, so yeah, we're buds. I guess it, what he's getting at is like when, when Dave was in the band, it was kind of more of that showbiz. Sammy's just like the rest of us. When we first got together, he fit like a glove. He's like, you know, I mean, listen to these guys, you know? Yeah. It never used to be that way before, you know, with Dave, with, with Sammy, it's just like, I guess we're all equal, so to speak, uh-huh. you know, yeah. all just a bunch of goofballs having uh-huh. fun. <laughs> Everybody just be themselves. Well, we, we talked that day about two or three months back. He seems like a very responsible <laughs> businessman. He's very calculated. Uh, you know, I mean, I figured that's why we have a manager. You know, I don't want to be a businessman, you know. Uh-huh. Leave, leave all that to him. All I want to do is play music and have a good time. But you got to admire the guy. He almost posted oh, sure. the oh, yeah. he, he said everything is under my, you know, oh, yeah. control the videos, sure. the music, uh-huh. the concerts. We well, do. I mean, everything on a creative aspect yeah. or level we control. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't care. I don't feel like going to the box office after a gig and going through the receipts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he wants to go right ahead, <laughs> you got to trust somebody <laughs> somewhere along the line. But didn't you find he was good for discipline, discipline yeah, the I, writing, I, the song, writing the music, I'm saying, in the creative process? Not really, because the music, the writing process is the same then as it is now. You know, I come up with the music and, and it's actually me that gets the ball rolling. Everybody else kind of dresses it up. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I come up with the seed, yeah. so to speak, and then we take it from there. And it used to be that way with Dave, too. So it wasn't like he cracked a whip on anything yeah, concerning yeah. the creative cool. process. I thought maybe he would just kind of judiciously edit it, you know, edit no. out some of the more... Well, maybe judiciously edit the clothes part. <laughs> yeah, he was he was more into the, the flash part of... Well, I don't want to talk about him anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. talk about us. <laughs> yeah, okay. The most notable attribute of Oh, you ate one too, he says. It's more straightforward, it seems like. The styles are a bit more rootsy, simple. I, I personally think it's more of a diverse record, you know? I mean, finish what you started, why can't dispute? I mean, uh, when it's love. Source uh, of infection. I mean, you got. I mean, the, yeah, there's a lot more diverse stuff on it. I don't think uh-huh. it's really that much more straight ahead. I mean, like, finish what you started almost sounds like, when you hear the intro, it almost sounds like Robert Cray or something like that. But. Then you have stuff like Source of Infection, uh, you know, which is, you know, old, old style Van Halen, you might say. And you have yeah. When It's Love, which is a ballad. And you have Feel So Good, which isn't really straight ahead at all, if you ask me. And you got Cabo Wabo, which is, you know, almost Zeppelin. Yeah, there's, there's, music, you know? there's music on the album for any type of mood you possibly would be in, could be in at any given point in the day. 
I think what he might be picking up on is that it's just a little more comfortable because we've been together. We did 5150, which is the first album. It's just a little more solid and comfortable. We we're in a complicated band to begin with. You know, I mean, how many notes you got? You got 12 notes to pick from, right? <laughs> I mean, we never did out of meter stuff like a band, say, like Rush or something. You know, we've always been pretty much one, four, five. In the know. studio, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you can dress it up and go really wild with as many effects and any of that. You know, we try to keep it just as any kind of maybe like a, a garnish just to enhance it. Just a fork and a knife to steal it. <laughs> 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 when you guys started out playing, you were a little different from the people in the audience. I mean, you may have even been a little bit younger when you were first doing clubs. And when you became popular, you were pretty much the same age as a lot of the kids. Although now, I guess, you're quite a bit older than most of your fans. Did I think you removed it all? No, not at all. And the funny thing is, especially with, say, like a record like OU812, since there, we do have songs like Source of Infection and, uh, you know, The Rockers, My Own Mind, whatever, and we have Feel So Good and stuff like that. You know, in the U.S. anyway, our audiences range from 13, 14-year-old kids to yeah. my age. Yeah. And, like when we did the Monsters tour. It was kind of funny, you know, to see people my own age out there struggling with the truth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Well, uh, interesting thing, I remember uh, Miles Davis, he was using the guitar player Mike Stern for a couple of years there. And one reason he used that guy was he wanted that Eddie Van Halen type of sound. Oh, really? Well, all right. Your fans kind of span a, a much wider range than you had thought. More like about 12 yeah, to yeah. about 85. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people are picking up on the, the uh -huh. kind of sound. Cause, all right. It's it's not the typical flash type of thing. Right, right. well, you know? it really isn't. I remember once you said, like, your father, when he listened to you play, he was always very moved oh, yeah. by it. What do you think you got? I don't know. It's just in my blood, I guess. You know, to, to me, it's a difference between being a true musician, so to speak. When I'm dead and gone, what I want to be remembered for is a musician, not just a flash guitarist. Somebody who, uh, you know, could write and play and perform, do all, you know, whatever it takes to be a full musician. With the myriad of imitators out, I was think, sitting down the other day trying to think what exactly it is about you that separates you from all the clones, the Eddie Van Halen clones out there. What do you think it is? I think it's the ability to be more of a musician than just, you know, a lot of people ask me, how come you don't uh, play as fast and crazy like you used to? Well, I've kind of grown into being more of a musician in, in a grander scheme, like getting better at songwriting and things like that. So, you know, I don't think you'll last in the music business if I was still just playing as fast as I could. So I think that's what sets me apart. Part of the reason you know, why Van Halen has been around for as long as we have will continue also. Because the music. Yeah, you know, look at Jimmy Page and stuff. In the beginning, he was a real flash guitarist, too, you know, on the first, second record, but he developed mm -hmm. into a good producer, songwriter, you know, and I think that's really what well, it's his, all about. In his case, it was the sound that was remembered. Yeah. You know, when you listen to the actual solos, it sounds like, you know, he's wearing gloves or something. Yeah, but it, it was unique because you try and copy the stuff, and, 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 and you, it was hard, you know, he had a touch that was real different. Pick song songs, Fairway to Heaven, come on, it's a classic. Yeah. That song and the solo in it is classic. The whole everything about it is, you know, and that's probably the height of his career. You know, the best thing that he's done. If he would have stopped doing that, then he might have went on. But mm -hmm. it's kind of a sad case. But is that what did it? I, I oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's like you just don't think you guys can burn out musically. Ah, uh, I think your, be, I think your brain burns out. You know, you keep pumping yourself full of drugs Good. and stuff. Something's bound to go, whether it be motivation or or inspiration or whatever, you know? It's, it's kind of ironic that most, a lot of the greats tend to take that path. Well, a lot of the real greats die. Yeah. You guys are working more with emotions than you did before. Maybe in the beginning you concentrated more on technique, but just now it's more... I'd, I'd say, in, yeah, in the very beginning, obviously, I was just kind of learning how to play myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of got to have the tools before you can... Uh, well, it sounds like, you know, the first album, I mean, it's kind of hard to improve on that, though, I mean, uh, well, I mean technically, technically. You know, from, my, from a guitar standpoint, I, I was really developing my technique at the time, and I think that I, I can play as fast and do whatever I want now, so I, I can devote my head more to what to do with it now, as opposed to just doing scales and stuff. Yeah, and as far as the emotion part goes, you know, that's how we were 10 years ago. Sure, yeah, and, you know, I just think we're, we're better all around. I think you're better. Oh, yeah. Don't you think as you get older, you lose certain things, though? But you then you gain that? other things I, also. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it's just, just, just a constant... I think you just change, you know, because if, if we kept doing the first album, you know, they'd go, hmm, huh, they're not changing. Sounds, Sounds just like the last record. <laughs> no, really, it's like, you know, critic-wise, you're fucked no matter what you do. Yeah. It's, if you change, you say, oh, they're, they're different now. <laughs> and if you don't change, they'll slam me for being the same. So you just go with what you feel. Uh -huh. You ever go back to the oldest stuff and 
Well, I mean, we you? play we play a little bit of everything. We play stuff off the first record up to yeah. the newest. Do you ever go back and listen to it? Only on a radio. How does it sound to you now? I mean, you know. it, it holds up in its own way. I think probably as, as far as any of, of what these other bands are doing today, I think it holds up with any of that. I think recording-wise, the way it sounds and everything, you know, it's still contemporary. I think we're playing good, so the playing holds up. I've heard some stuff, and I think our songwriting's a lot better nowadays. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. To me, it's it's mainly some of the cover tunes. I say, you're no good. You know, I, yeah, I, I listen yeah. to that stuff sometimes. I go, oh. Dancing in the street, you know, stuff, yeah. like that. stuff that wasn't really my idea to do. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. The truth is out, then. That's uh, oh yeah. yeah, come on. That's half the reason why I built my own studio. I mean, it's like I'd written Jump, you know, at least two and a half, three years before it was kind of loud on the record. You know, it might have been not that quite, quite that long, but it was yeah. at least an album before or two. Because I remember doing yeah. Fair Warning, I already had Jump, and then we did Diver Down, and then I built my studio, and I said, "This mm-hmm. it's going on record, whether you like it or not." Mm-hmm. During the course of the uh, the band's career, have you ever found yourself becoming too indulgent, sacrificing melodies for technique? Let's say, for example, guitar playing wise. Did anybody tell you the solo's a little too long, uh, it's a little too flash there, and you hold it down a little bit? Well, not really. Sometimes live, you know, it starts getting into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah you too. <laughs> I, I don't think I tend to like, like, say a song like When It's Love on OU812. The solo fits. I wouldn't do a solo that I did in Source of Infection in a song like When It's Love. Uh-huh. And I don't think I've really uh, done a solo that doesn't fit a tune, so to speak. No, I mean, you pretty you much know, know if something sounds good yeah. or not. You know, if something's not going to sound good, then everybody's going to, you know, everybody will hear it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ever been clashes, like, within the band? Like, you know, Michael wants this, but, you know, they really got get that come Not up. really, no. We, we're very, uh, we're very similar in, in, uh, in knowing, you know, if something stinks or not. <laughs> What about your producer? How much input does he have? How uh, much input do we have? Yeah, <laughs> we, we produce it ourselves, so. Uh-huh. You did the last for yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, well, the one before, too, basically. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Mick Jones got there when we were done. We felt really bad, so we ended up writing one more song with him just to make him feel like he was a part of it. <laughs> no, I swear to God. And 1984 was the first <laughs> album done in my studio, and that pretty much we did ourselves, too. Uh-huh. But that wasn't credited to you, right? No. no. Well, you know, Ted was still our yeah. official... Your official mentor. His name was still on it. Executive producer. You know, he wasn't that involved. Well, see, like, from the very beginning, you guys pretty much had control of the reins, because even he... Well, not, saying, not completely. Oh, really? Otherwise, songs like Dancing in the Streets would... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, you know, but I remember saying one time you got in the it really pissed me off because, like, say, Diver Down, that album was half cover tones, pretty woman on it, and uh-huh. had you know, you get all the good times gone, and you know, I'm just calling it enough. But I'd rather that was Tyrus Templeton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Templeton. Is that right? Oh yeah. Whatever. Well, it was Dave and Ted. You know, they were very. Their philosophy was sort of, if you redo an old hit, you're halfway there. It's already been done. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember yeah, saying, I remember, I'd rather bomb with my own shit <laughs> than make it with somebody else's. Think of the time you could save on like, writing to you know, man. Just, no, but that pissed me off, because I remember <laughs> the lick I had for Dancing in the Streets. Do, 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 the synthesizer thing. Let's write my yeah, own song. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and he, he kind of says, cool, I'm going to this yeah. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> but at that time, I wasn't in the position to say no. And finally, we kind of... Uh, that, well, that, uh, that shows a major change in the band right there. Oh, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. a lot more that was 1984. 1984, it was the first album, actually, where we did what we wanted. Yeah. That might be part of the reason why a certain person left. <laughs> <laughs> Guns and Roses, you know, we... The nice tattoos. Nice, nice tattoos. Great headband. Great hair, too. The great hair. Great hair. Love <laughs> well, You just asked what we think of them? No. Uh, no. Oh. Say that, like, they kind of represent uh, sort of these new bad boys who are, seem to be destroying themselves in public on, on drugs mm-hmm. and yeah. alcohol. Well, you see, something like that's popular right now. It's like... Is it popular? You know, it seems like they're... Well, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a fad. It's like... Uh, well, so I mean, years ago, what do you mean? you got to be popular if you sell that many yeah. records. No, I mean, the, the, that kind of, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll type of lifestyle. But I just saying, like, you know, you guys seem like you are very clean now. Actually, well, nothing's really changed. We just don't do it in public as often. <laughs> <laughs> You kind of get a well, handle on when to do it and when not to do it, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. You can, you can do anything to excess. Well, I still uh, like a cop of buzz and have fun, yeah, you know? You know yeah. We go out and party, but uh, it's just point in time, you know? It's like, I don't know. Kind of got to know when to pull the plug. But after a while, I guess it becomes <laughs> a tiresome as well, you know? Dude. Yeah. Kind of, uh, it drags you down. It's a little harder to get up every morning. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. It loses its life. You don't want to be able to go out on the road and play longer than a week. Really? <laughs> uh-huh. did, did you ever go through a period where you thought it was getting a little too intense and... Yeah, it kind of happened, happened with me, around, around 83, 84. And it, was, it was more 
Ah, uh, forget it. No, 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 no. Uh, no, I went a little overboard, you know, with cert- certain certain. Hey, all of us did. All of us have it at one point or another. But you know, and that's the great thing about having you know these yeah, so boys of mine. You know, to tell you, hey, man, catch up and says, hey, you know. A lot of times, everybody's getting wild together, and you know nobody sees what's going on until all of a sudden it's too late, and then yeah. it's like, well, and then you see find, you guys, and you find a Bond Scott and a car dead, you yeah, know, the bottle yeah. in his hand, yeah. and not placing the onus on on Dave or anything, but I, I guess his leaving the band maybe sort of cleared the air a little bit for you. I, I'd, I'd have to well, say, yeah. yeah, you know, it really lifted a cloud. Right? But when he first left, I mean, was it a feeling of relief or was it a feeling of more shock? It was shock. It was definitely shot uh-huh. because we just so are, come off our biggest record. Yeah. And here's, we went, what? Here's the that thing, you're God. working for your whole you know? life, you know, and you know, and you're playing your real pop and all of a sudden it's like, Well, uh, what do we do today? Yeah. <laughs> now what? Yeah. Sitting around, you know? Kind of like the abused wife who thought she had to depend on her husband oh, yeah. for years and all of a sudden she finds herself free, but she's kinda of shocked. Cause... Very well put. You said it, not me. You tell them this baby interview, Eddie, that you said that for a while there you your dependency on alcohol was so bad that you had to drink in order to write in order yeah, well to it was it was more of a uh i don't think i've ever honestly written a song without having to have the heat going and, and it's just the kind of thing where i'd be playing and then i'd get stomped and i'd go ah. you know what i mean it's just kind of association right. you know and that's all i ever knew you, you know get on the I mean, ever since I, was, I started playing, mm-hmm. you know, I, I drank Schlitz Malt Pals, blah, 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 blah. Hey, great idea, right? And uh, it was tough doing it without. Uh, I'm still drinking beer now, but actually I did a whole Monsters tour without drinking a drop of alcohol. And that was uh, really interesting, performing without drinking. Is it I, I had to somehow figure out a way to make that nervous energy work in a positive mm-hmm. way. So what I used to do was just numb it. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. Most of us could tell the way, you know, he's jumping around and all yeah. over the stage. It's like, wow, it's... It's like Different slow, slow, slow down, man. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> How, do, do you think it changed your, your playing at all on that tour? Um, I mean, when you get in front of people, I imagine the buzz is the same whether or not you're uh, slightly snockered or, or sober. Well, it's a different kind of buzz. I mean, it's, you get nervous. Yeah. I get nervous. You know, you think after having done it so much, you're not nervous anymore, but I get really nervous. So I used to drink to numb the nerves, you know. I mean, it's a cheap excuse, but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. And I just fell into that habit. You know, I still have a couple of beers before I yeah. play. It's just habit. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it's like, also a disease, but... but... But it wasn't the type of thing where, like, you know, like you would, like, see Eddie maybe 12 o'clock the next day, and it wasn't like he'd get up in the morning and, like, have a drink or anything, right? It's never, never got to the point Sometimes. Where... No, well, yeah, well, that'd be before... Sometimes we all did. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever have one of and have gone to sleep yet? Yeah. Uh, no, but did you ever, like, have to say, hey, man, you know, you had to knock this shit off? Oh, yeah. You know, and they said the same thing to me at, uh-huh. at, at times when they, when they see me. Uh-huh. It's happened to all of us. I wasn't really that much of a hard drinker. Cause, Beer fucked yeah. you up, too. You drink enough of it, especially the bowl. So the other thing he said was he read that you had cleaned up your act since the death of your father. Yeah, that helped a lot. Because yeah. uh, my dad was an alcoholic, and uh, he's basically pickled on the inside. Everything went. He asked both out, <laughs> you know, not following his footsteps. So Al quit. He's been sober shit for almost two years. It's long. Or two years? No, it's almost two years. It's cold two turkey. Years. Yeah? Old cold turkey. Tur- well, yeah. You know, I tried it for a while, but I, I, I just felt like, huh? Something's missing. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like maybe a tenth of what I used to be. Some of the greater artists, he says, kind of go on this course of self-destruction. Whereas he says that in your case, you guys just, just seem to be regular guys. There doesn't seem to be any craziness now. Everything in moderation. I guess it's just something you outgrow. It's just, well, yeah, well, you know, you, you, you kind of outgrow it and you kind of learn as you go along. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, you should have seen us on our first tour in 78. Oh. Right. I was the one who was telling you guys. Yeah. That, you know, I swear to God, I'll never forget in England after 11 months of touring. And here's everyone just going crazy, destroying the whole town, going, hey, guys, don't forget, we got to go home next week and we gotta start doing another record because the uh, first record goes gold or platinum or whatever you, <laughs> you think you've made it slaps you upside the head and you, you know you want to stay up there you got another record to do and it was me actually pulling the reins back on uh-huh. the guys I wanted the band to work uh-huh. and go on and make history so mm-hmm. to speak at that time we actually would have a band meeting yeah <laughs> you know oh, right. yeah. and right. then to bring everything out mm-hmm. in the open you know hey you've been uh, and you were uh, you know and <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's the way we did it then. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You learn from all that. We still have band meetings. Yeah, no. You still have these band meetings, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it's it's for different reasons. Uh-huh. Now, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but, but, but that's how we kept you know each other in line, and and now you know you learn from all that stuff. Yeah. But but in that sense, I mean, it always has been a democracy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we always. Talk- 
talked about when Dave left became a democracy, but no, it's it's always been it's, it's always, always been, been a democracy. democracy. Yeah, yeah, nothing's changed since Sammy's been with us. You know, it's still a democracy. Uh-huh. Yep, and he loves it because mm-hmm. you know he kind of did things backwards, joining a band from a solo career. Most mm-hmm. people leave a band to start a solo That's career. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. so he's in heaven too. He's only gonna do a quarter of the work now. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, but he has twenty five percent input at oh, the yeah. very beginning. Oh, sure, which is amazing. Uh-huh. The, uh, you know, the new member kind yeah. of. Uh, that's that was the only yeah. thing, only doubt I think that Sammy had was how we would fit in to this band right. that's been going for ten years. When he realized how how simple and easy and how open we work, you know, he said, "Shit, yeah." From the the very first note, we all played together. I mean, everybody's mouth kind of hung open, and we said, "Yeah." What a question for you, Eddie. If you had never started playing the guitar, what do you think you would have challenged your energy into? Well, I was too small to play football. <laughs> <laughs> Portal star. No, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still working on that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> No, I used to love playing football. In junior <laughs> high, I was on, on football team, and uh, I sprained my thumb after, like, a, a scrimmage game. Uh-huh. And I said, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> and I started playing. No, I already played guitar. That's why I quit the football team. But uh, I have no idea, honest God, truth, because it's the only thing that I felt was mine, all mine, no pun intended. I have no idea what I'd be doing, because there's no way in hell I could do a nine-to-fiver kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I'm just not that type of person. You obviously, you're very good with your hands, though, so I'd imagine you would have gotten involved in something. Yeah, porno star. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would have done something with my hands, obviously. Yeah. Have you ever done anything else? I mean, you... A piano. Play, play piano, that's uh-huh. it. That's it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I started playing piano at six years old in Holland. Both Alex and I. And I was like... <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Practice. European stuff. Yeah, I won, yeah, I won a few trophies, you know, and shit like that. And I got to be 12 years old. I said, I've had it. Do something of my own. But, I mean, you, you still are adept at playing the keyboard. Oh, yeah. Obviously. I mean, I play all the keyboard. You know, I write on them. And... I thought that was something you just kind of picked up. And you can no, play, no, no, you no. Can I, was, I was, like, trained to be a classical right? pianist, like a Vladimir Horowitz. Yeah. So you can actually sit down and, and like, I used to play be the music. No, no, no. I never learned how to read. Al did. I always fooled the teacher. Well, I had a good ear. I swear to God, I never learned how to read. I took lessons for six years and never learned how to read. Always fooled the teacher. Yeah. Almost inconceivable. I don't know. Well, that's why my dad always kind of enjoyed, got a kick out of me uh-huh. because I had ears, you know. Uh-huh. I just picked the stuff up. Yeah, it's kind of another difference, too, you know, between like somebody who can sight read and just and play. When I was taking music, I could I could read and everything, but uh, I was really no good at being at sight reading. I'd go, I'd go home and I'd, you know, I'd check it out and whatever yeah, you know, right. and when I'd play I wouldn't even really do right. the music either yeah. because I was no good at doing that and, and uh, playing right off uh-huh. the bat either yeah, yeah, I, I never ro- liked reading music actually uh-huh. <laughs> I mean I, I wish I could to tell you the truth it's you know? <laughs> so easy I mean when I was in, what, I, I when it's, I was oh yeah well see it's, it, for me it's hard I don't know right. why I just got this mountain block against reading music you know but that, it's weird because you could teach somebody who, who never could play an instrument or never plays an instrument to teach to read music uh, you know I never took any lessons on guitar either mm-hmm. yeah, right. and I think if I did and I learned how to read and everything I probably wouldn't come up with all the weird yeah, shit yeah, that I do you true. know so yeah. it's kind of limiting yeah. it actually doesn't leave much room for uh, creativity yeah yeah one well, question before we line you up against the wall here all right he says of all the uh, the heavy metal hard rock bands that are, that are out now it's still Van Halen that, that brings out the most violent impulses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we didn't take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Just the other day, I was driving out to the beach, and uh, somebody had been driving my truck, and there was a, our tape in there, and it turned the radio on, and, you know, whatever the tape's in there, it goes on automatically. And I swear to God, mine on mine was playing, and before I knew it, I was driving my nine miles an hour. I swear to God. You think she was the same way? Yeah, yeah, it really freaked me out. Speaking of which, out of all the the, the, gl- the glut of bands there, is anybody producing anything of any quality? Yeah, I don't really listen to stuff. Uh-huh. It's like, say, say with Guns N' Roses, the only thing I know about them is what I see on MTV, it's yeah. like which I rarely watch yeah. anyway. Uh-huh. You know, it's just that my wife is watching, I walk through that room, and who is that? You know? yeah. I'm not really that up with uh, current events. But I mean, well, the, the clones you guys have spawned, though, I mean, obviously you've seen some of the, the product. I mean, what, what, how, does it, how does it look to you guys? I don't know. You don't know? I don't really listen. Yeah. Well, you know, like like they say, they're the sprinters and the marathoners, and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of sprinters out there, but uh, we're still running the marathon. Mm-hmm. Still and I, I guess it would be interesting to see where some, some of these bands will yeah. be 10 years from now. 
I think that's true, Tosky. The wall. Damn it. Hey, the wall is. Hey, hey, wait, what's. Were you guys talking about hey. Scotter? We're all we're hearing is a bunch of bullshit over here. Hey, man. Like, oh, Jesus Christ, you're lying. That's not the truth. That's not the way it is. Hey, all we were doing was relaying what you were saying in there to them. I guess on that note, we'll line up against the, the paper here and get, get I tell the, you that, man, the real picture. Together, us four, we got to be the silliest motherfuckers you've ever met in your life. I guess that's what keeps you going, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just constant. That's why, that's why they split us up, because we get all four of us together. Uh, oh, you won't get, you won't get a split answer, huh? You won't get nothing out of us. <laughs> I started playing because I was just your typical insecure person, being jerked around by, you know, girlfriends or people at school and this and that I felt I sound stupid I felt lonely I was just your basic loner so I started playing guitar I just kind of fell into it I didn't know what else to do except play guitar I got so into guitar that I would sit there hours on end not go out not go to parties not do anything except lock myself in my room and play guitar Ask ask Alex. He knows. He he would go out with it with his old lady and come back at three o'clock in the morning. And I'd still be up playing. I probably wrote more songs within that two three year period of time than I ever will. And it was because I was depressed. So was this like your friend, the guitar? It was a piece of wood that was part of me that I slapped together myself. And I just looked at it and I said, this piece of wood could never hurt me unless I fell on it, you know? Playing guitar always helped me through emotional, bummed out times because I had something. Instead of turning on TV or doing drugs, you know, I felt like I had something. It wasn't like, oh, I'm bummed out. I better play my guitar. It's like, I can say that now because that's what I did. If I did get depressed, you know, I don't want to sound like a geek, but guitar really means a lot more to me than an instrument. It's part of me, period. My mother and father used to tell Alex and I, get a job, have something to fall back on. Here I am, 21 years old going, oh, God, Al, what are we going to do? So Al has this bright idea, and he goes, here, put this blue overall on. And we went down to San Marino, which is a real rich section, South Pasadena area. And Alex would go knock on the doors and say, hi, I'm from uh, San Marino Department of whatever. And I'd be sitting out in the gutter taping up the house number to paint the number on the house. And Al would charge him three bucks. And that's <laughs> that's how we made money. To Wait buy. a minute. You just, like, calmed them into thinking that you had to oh, paint yeah. the number? Yeah. Well, what if they already had a number on their house? We'd say, well, it's, you know, it's mandatory. Once a year, it has to be done. <laughs> Al, Al was a very good talker. <laughs> you got away with it? Really? Uh -huh. for until, how? until one day, after we did this for about a month and a half, every day, a cop happens to pull up. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? I'm going, ow. <laughs> So he just said, he kicked us out and out of the city. Was it very much like you were the younger brother sort of getting into these scrapes that Alex was devising? I, I depend on Alex. Yeah. I really do. Sounds hokey, but I, I, I love him so much. Even if he wasn't my brother, he would be my best friend. That's why we can fight without hurting each other. Still get things out. I used to love Dave Clark Five, so I bought myself a drum set, and I'd be out throwing the papers, you know, as a paper boy, to make money to pay for the $125 drum set, and Alex would be home practicing Wipeout, and he got better than me, and he was taking flamenco guitar lessons at the time, and I picked up his guitar. The majority of the ideas I come up with, I write on piano and then apply to guitar. And nobody believes me, just like no one believes me that Eric Clapton is the only guitarist that I ever copped licks from. What I used to do is I'd, I'd sit down with a turntable 
and listen to the live cream stuff and take the turntable and put it on 16, not 33 RPM, but uh, 16, which is real slow. And I take the balance and put it to the left or the right, whichever side the guitar was on, and crank it up and play along. And it sounded like, you know, real, it's like an, almost an octave lower when you turn the speed down to 16. But I, I, I learned everything, like note for note. It seems to me, however, that, I mean, as far as stuff like people think, when they think in terms of guitarists, and they think of 60s guitarists, you may not have listened to them, with the exception of Clapton. But what you're doing is you're taking the same instrument that they used, and it's like you're moving it into another dimension. I mean, it's like you've created this whole other kind of language. You do stuff that I never heard before, and that doesn't mean that you're better or that you're... Yeah. You know I, what I mean? It's just like... Oh, it's the next I, I, don't, step, I don't at almost. all feel that I'm better. If if I, if I kick the bucket tomorrow, the only thing I want people to at least think of me as or respect me or whatever is that I have done things on guitar that no one else has done. I'll beat the out of my guitar to get any kind of noise I can out of it. Now, why do you think you get those noises out of it and other people haven't before? Anger. You don't know what it is that makes Van Halen good? No, because uh, when Dave, Al, Mike, and I get along great, it's no different than when we can't stand each other. Are there really times when you can't stand each other? Sure. Come on, you're married. A bunch of times when you don't feel like putting up with your husband. I mean, Valerie will admit to putting a hammer to my head sometimes. A hammer to your head? Oh, okay, not a hammer. Maybe a door to my face. <laughs> Whenever you know or spend a lot of time with one person, it's inevitable that uh, you fight. Period. Alex and I were brothers. Without him, I don't know how I would handle all of this. And we fight more than anyone I've ever known. But we also get along better than anyone I know. That helps me get getting along with anyone else around me, just like getting along with Valerie. It, uh, we fight so much that we get everything out. At what point did you know that Van Halen was going to be something special? I always thought Van Halen was going to be something special. To me, Van Halen was special when we played backyard parties. Because it was me. What were you like then? The same jerk I am now. <laughs> What'd you play? What'd you look like? I played guitar. And... I know you played guitar. <laughs> oh. I, I didn't look too much different, actually. But to me, Van Halen was always something, you know, something special to me because it was, it was uh, the main part of my life. You've said that the guitar is your first love. Is that still true? There are different kinds of love. I mean, I, I wouldn't trade my wife in for another guitar. It's just part of me, period. Actually, it kept me from growing up, really, like, like my father. Two things he always says is, uh, you only live once, and there's nothing better than a good life. <laughs> He's like a real major role model to you. I mean, you never oh, yeah. had any other heroes that you looked up to, no movie stars, no musicians, no. nothing. It was him. I'll tell you, Alex and I and my mom and dad were a very close family. And I almost play to please them to give their seal of approval and go, yeah, I like that. That means more to me than 20,000 people in an arena cheering. That what I'm doing on stage is, is me. That's the only thing I can do. Seriously. I put, I put everything I got into what I do on record or live, and I'm glad people like it, but it's just very funny, even though I'm in my late 20s, 
How late? Uh, it's 10 to 2. I still feel like I'm a jerk kid. Like when, when I was in high school, when chicks didn't want to go out with me because I didn't have a car or this and that. No, I, all right, I, all right, all right, now stop. I still feel the same way. You have been named best rock guitarist by, what is it, Guitar Player Magazine now for five years in a row. You are married to, you know, one of America's sweethearts, okay? You get kids screaming in concerts. What's it going to take to make you feel like that people really do appreciate you and you've got something going for you? I mean... It seems a little bit over modest. Okay, I don't feel like I'm over modest, but I guess maybe I am. Everyone always tells me, hey, you know, get out of your wimpy attitude about yourself and this and that. But I started playing guitar to like have something on my own that I like to do, and people will look at me and go, hey, he's good at something. I never bargained for all of this. I don't think I'm any different than anyone who comes to see us play. It really isn't an inferiority thing. It's just the way I feel. Playing guitar is part of me. If Van Halen ever goes, you know, and people don't like us anymore, um, I'm not going to go get a day job or I'm going to continue playing guitar. Cause that's what I love to do. Is there part of you, is there a fear somewhere in you that if you gave in to all this adulation and if you started to believe the publicity and the applause and the hysteria and the kids grabbing at you and, and that kind of eddy, eddy, do you think that that would hinder your creativity? No. I get more hung up thinking about how to avoid it. Yeah, but why do you want to avoid it? Because I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like, you know. don't like applause? Then why I, do you okay, want to stage? I like applause. Uh, why don't you just play guitar in your house then? That's what I did for years. Okay, but now you're on but a stage. But then you get to a certain age where you got to have some kind of income. Come on, that's not the only reason you're doing it, just it? about. You don't like being uh, sliding across the stage and making an audience go crazy? You saw my knees. I see think I like to hurt. I see the look on your face too, and you got like a real look of joy on your face yeah. sometimes when you're playing. I mean, you may have that on your face in your house when you're playing alone as well. I don't know. I do. I know some people who love that spotlight, that being in the middle and causing the hysteria, whatever. Uh, Alex pointed this out to me. He said, next time you do your guitar solo, look. And he said, you can slide on your knees or kick your amps or do whatever you want, but the people cheer loudest when you stand still and play. And that makes me very happy that they appreciate what I do on the guitar, not on my knees, you know? You don't feel like a rock star. What is a rock star? Sounds like one of the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Hi, I'm from Bedrock. I'm a... Joe Rockstar. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when I think rock star, I think of a person posing, wearing skin tight satin pants or spandex. I'm not like that. I, I wear the clothes I do on stage because they'll beat me up if I don't. Because <laughs> that might just seem go out there the way I look right See, now. Because I, I love to great. play. Yeah. When you started out, did you, what did you envision for Van Halen? I mean, when you were playing for $100 a week, what were your dreams? Okay, what, what I dreamt was that we would be famous, but not famous in the way the word means. Not that I could walk down the street and everyone would go, hey, that's him. Not like that, but famous in a way that people like the music we make. I would love to be the invisible man and just play. Why don't you stand behind a curtain then? Because they won't let me. My brother used to throw drumsticks at me. Move, move, jump around. I mean, I, I, I don't jump up and down and slide on my knees in the studio. I play. How That's you... all I ever bargained for was I love to play. I want to play. Do you like playing more when you're on stage and you're sliding on your knees and you're jumping up and down? I mean, does it give you an extra added kick? 
No, when I used to throw drumsticks at me, and that really beat me up, but everyone used to yell at me, you know, move, move, do this, do that. Uh, I was afraid to to do or move the way I felt like moving. And what I'm doing now, no matter how ridiculous or whatever I look, sometimes I see pictures of myself, I'm going, but what the hell, that's me. Whereas back then, I would try and move the way I was supposed to. Hi, I'm a rock star, I'm a lead guitarist. I better look like every other lead guitarist, otherwise I won't be accepted. What I'm saying is that the way, the way I move is the way is me. There's lots of people who work hard and who don't have the same kind of talent. I mean, who work don't have a gift a for being way. able to create melodies and things. That's a gift. That's talent, no? I'm not just saying it's something that comes easy to you when it just rolls off your fingers. You devote okay, your I, life I to guess, it. Okay, I guess what I don't like is, okay, the word gift is like something that was just handed to you or given to you. Mm hmm by some unknown power. Right. I don't know. I don't even tune normal. You know? How do you tune? You mean just how it sounds right to you? Yeah. If people have perfect pitch, I'd probably drive them nuts. Why? Because standard tuning, like what a piano is tuned to, is A440. Those are the cycles of the overtones and vibrations of that note. A, above middle C, 440. I don't tune to A, I tune down. Why? Because certain harmonics come out better, depending on how you tune. Uh, sometimes I tune up, depending on what kind of sound I want. The point remains is that you don't go by these rules anyway, okay? So you created your own rules. You Do you see a book own... in this room? <laughs> I hate books. Any kind of books? Reading books? Or just, you mean, guitar books? or I like music entertaining books, books, but anything concerning theories, anything that someone wrote that's supposed to set some kind of, this is the way you're supposed to do it, makes me gag. I mean, I wouldn't sit there and do... I wouldn't do the, the weird stuff I do on guitar if I took lessons. I just enjoy playing period, whether it's by myself or with people or with machines or just in my own mind while I'm going to sleep, you know? How can you go to sleep if you hear these melodies in your mind? Don't you want to just get up and get them down on the tape? Um, that's why I have all this stuff here. Yeah. So, so then when I wake up, you know, uh, what you call it? gone bad. I woke up around five o'clock in the morning. Valerie and I were in a hotel. I forget where it was. All of a sudden, I just, I had this riff in my head, you know, this thing. And I didn't want to wake her up. So I grabbed a little cassette machine and I hopped in the closet. The closet? I hopped in the closet. Oh, it was during or before fair warning. You've had that sitting around all this time? Not the way it is on record. But musically, note for note, exactly the same. And you wrote it on a except piano. Except in the living room floor with a Prophet 10 synthesizer that blew up on me. <laughs> started smoking, you know. Why? So I went and got, I don't know. <laughs> it's like everything I touch either blows up or... <laughs> that's basically the way I like sound is, you know, on the verge of dying. You know, like a certain harmonics just... I mean, you do that, man, it sounds like a horse or something. <laughs> Here's my elephant again. Here's my mice. <laughs> Sometimes, man, the, the, the speakers in my amps just sound like they're ripping apart. You know, doing... Well, this isn't my amp. This record was so important to my mental health. Why? Because if this album bombed, I probably would have broken my guitar and became a race driver. No. 
Really? You don't I, have I would have kept playing, but I sure would have been very, like, well, I guess what I like, no one else likes. And I started thinking, well, God, if this album bombs, I can't force myself to think pop or commercial. What comes out of my head is what is there. But did you think I, this was an experimental album? No, this was an album that is very, very much me. More than the others? Oh, yes. You can play many different styles of guitar, can't you? I mean, you were telling me before sure. you could play crosswords, note for note. Uh huh. Which I still love to hear, actually. Okay, I'll but, play a little oh, bit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, all right. Let's play solo part, wait. When you, you when you learned that? Before I ever saw Derek and the Dominoes. So that was like in the teens. That was right? about 15. Do you feel that what you play on stage with Van Halen is being the guitar hero, or is that what you want to play? I mean, are you happy? Whenever I'm playing, I play what I want to play. You're not like doing excessive, flashy no, work no, because you feel no, it's that role no, that you've been put no into. Way. Look, at least I admit it. I'm a very self-centered selfish you're well, selfish and self-centered well i mean i thank god and everyone that people like what i do but i didn't start playing to be a star i'm obsessed with music i'm gonna sit here and play and i'll get off more sitting here by myself than being on stage in front of twenty thousand people really more yes really yeah why? I don't know. I guess when I'm alone, I don't have to worry about what anyone thinks of what I do. Were people always telling you you were nuts? No, they didn't tell me I was nuts. I just, it was my own insecurities, I guess, that made me feel afraid, scared, whatever, easily intimidated, whatever. 
What's changed that? Has the success of this record changed that? No. To some degree? I'm very proud of this record because, you know, a lot of my life went into it. And having the success that it's having it proves to me that what I like isn't so bad after all. I don't know, things like Cathedral, on Diver Down, Sunday Afternoon in a Park or whatever. I, I, I like a lot of different things. I'm not into, hey, let's say, hey, pop tune, hit single, man, yeah, you know. I'm not into the Archies or whatever you call it, you know, that kind of bubble gum. Or, or, or I couldn't tell you if Drop Dead Legs is more of a hit than Jump, because I like both. I could never have predicted Beat It being a hit. I don't could you think have ever that. thought Jump would be a number one single? I was hoping that it would get in the top ten. You've been in the top ten before. Weren't you? I don't wasn't think Pretty so. Woman? I think Pretty 11? Woman made it to eleven. That's not top ten. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Whatever. I guess you've made it when you're on solid gold. No. <laughs> Is Jump on solid gold? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw Listen, little. you know, they're using it for the basketball games. Did you know That's that? That's what people have been telling me, yeah. One thing is that just because this record did so good, it puts no pressure. People have already asked me, like, hey, how about next time around or whatever? You mean to top that? Like, how can you top it? See, that's mm -hmm. what I mean, to top what? Right. Do you get a lot of pleasure from your music? I mean, when you... Pleasure? Yes. Yeah, I mean, when you play something that you really just love, or you think of a melody and you play it and you get it down on tape and then you fix it or you play it back or whatever you do, noodling around, as you put it, does it make you happy? I put it this way, I love it and it's a euphoric feeling. I don't put it above my wife. I don't put it above my brother, my family, people I love. It's just different. But it's something that I have that, like earlier we were talking about gift or talent. It's the gift or talent is the ability to use your brain to focus in on something. Anybody can do what I do if they had that will. Oh, no, come on. Yes. Anybody, Anybody could sit down and play the way you do or think up melodies or hear things in their heads? If they were as obsessed to the point where I am and if they were into it like I am. Yeah, but the reason that you're into it and the reason you're obsessed is because partially because you can do it and because there's no, a talent there. No. The talent is having the will and knowing what you want to do. I know so many people, man, are just running around like chickens without a head. You know? Yeah, but they, they might have not no be able focus. to focus. But they also might not be able to sing a song or play a guitar. I mean, I because they have no focus. If you approached it and felt the same way about it as I do, and you were obsessed to the point I am, and I didn't play guitar for money or whatever, you know, didn't right. get into it for that reason, just because it got you off in some way, you know, and that you really enjoyed it. Anyone who thinks and approaches music or the noise I make or the instruments that I fool around with with the same attitude that I do, can do. Edward, thanks for talking to me. Thank you for putting up with me, Lisa. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed. <laughs>